In our last episode, we looked at what I called the best of the best for the Sega CD. These were the games I considered to be the absolute top tier of what the platform offered. We went over great games like Batman Returns with its impressive sprite scaling engine. We saw Snatcher and the unique story it told. And of course, old Sonic showed up to remind you that he was still a heck of a draw after all these years. The thing is, is that even though that episode had over 30 games in it, it still wasn't big enough to cover every Sega CD game worth owning. Not even close. That's why we are now going into overtime and talk about even more great games for the Sega CD. These are the games that were all in contention for the best of the best episode, but just missed the mark, sometimes by the smallest of margins. Every one of these games are good enough that many of them regularly appear in best of Sega CD lists and videos pretty damn often. I've got two dozen games for you, so let's get started. The Sega Genesis port section in my previous video was actually loaded with choices. While Mickey Mania was the winner there, I had six other runner-ups that were neck and neck for that title. In 1993, Sega took its popular Genesis game, Spider-Man vs. The Kingpin, and re-released it on the Sega CD with a number of changes and upgrades. You got new cinematics, a new soundtrack, faster gameplay, more choice in how you played the stages, and two entirely new levels and villains. If you enjoyed the original, this one is even better. Echo Tides of Time was another Genesis port that moved over to the Sega CD with some nice enhancements. Like the first, you got an incredible soundtrack and enhanced sound effects that really improves the experience. This one was in the running for the best sound on the Sega CD as well. Flashback was another Sega Genesis port that showed up in fine form on the Sega CD. Here you get a great cinematic platformer that has additional pre-rendered cutscenes and voice work to help tell you a more cohesive story. This always looked, sounded, and played incredible, and now it's even better. Pitfall the Mayan Adventure on the Sega CD is point blank one of the very best versions of that game available. It has a new soundtrack, new cinematics, three new levels and runs smoother than the 32X release. It was one of the better animated games at the time and still holds up today. Finally, we have Pugsy, a game that got little attention on the Genesis and even less on the Sega CD. I always loved the special effects in this, and now you get a CD soundtrack and additional animated story segments to help bring Pugsy's world to life. The physics engine alone makes it so different from the other platformers you're used to. If you've never played this, the Sega CD version is an excellent way to experience it. The full motion video style of game actually had a few different considerations as well. As you recall, I chose Road Avenger as my favorite, but it wasn't without its competition. Dracula Unleashed was kind of set up similar to a Sherlock Holmes title. You needed to talk to people, investigate clues, gather items, and find out who the vampire is that's killing everyone. This is a follow-up to the events that went down in Bram Stoker's Dracula and features characters associated with that story. It's got a great atmosphere, the music is fitting, and the video quality wasn't bad at all considering the hardware. There was also Ground Zero Texas, which is what you'd get if you mix Night Trap with a sci-fi shooter. You have to man cameras around town and find out what's going on and where the aliens have stashed their weapons for the final assault. It's actually quite a bit deeper than your typical full motion video offering and has some decent special effects not normally seen in these types of games. If you enjoyed the likes of Night Trap and Double Switch, this is definitely one worth checking out. Hey, 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 sweetness. What do you say we get to know each other? Huh? Yeah. Uh, what do you say, huh? <laughs> I thought he could use one more. That one really hit the spot. <laughs> 
A number of people took issue with me choosing AH3 Thunderstrike as the best shooter on the Sega CD. While I stand by the choice, it also had a couple of contenders that nearly dethroned it at the 11th hour. Android Assault was one such game, a woefully underrated shoot 'em up that I really enjoyed. You pilot the Bari Arm, a huge transforming mech that can be powered up into a pure killing machine. Earth has been invaded and its very existence threatened, and only you can stop it. It has a great soundtrack, colorful visuals, lots of cool parallax and line scrolling effects, and your weapons have multiple forms of attack. It won't dethrone the likes of the better Thunder Force titles, but this is still a great 16-bit shooter. The Aleste series also got an update with Robo Aleste, a vertical shooter that takes some liberties with Japanese history. You've got steam-powered mecha, cool cinematics, and a fairly deep story for a shooter. It's never commanded the respect of Musha, but I always found it solid and easily one of the better games on the Sega CD. The sports category was perhaps one of the most competitive in my last video. FIFA was a heck of a game loaded with teams and nearly endless replay value, and it's still won by the smallest of margins. NBA Jam was certainly up there, particularly when you consider the multiplayer aspect. It supports 4 players, 27 teams, 54 NBA players, and has much better sound than the Genesis version. The only letdown here was the lack of sprite scaling on the players, a huge omission for a console built for such effects. There was also NHL 94, a port of the mega popular Genesis edition. You get the same great game as before with 4 player support and that gameplay that still resonates so well today. The Sega CD release adds better sound effects and music, making it the best version of this game available. I don't personally follow the NHL, but even I can recognize its quality. Finally, I also consider WWF Rage in the Cage. I know, it's sports entertainment, but I was a big fan of wrestling when I was a kid and I quite enjoyed this. It's got a great roster of 20 wrestlers that include greats like The Undertaker, The Macho Man, Bret Hart, and Razor Ramon. The theme music here was great, and it had multiplayer so you could beat your friends up. Its one glaring flaw was that the incredible Royal Rumble mode was removed for some reason, leaving the Steel Cage as your lone special event. This was a huge error, and really held this one back from greatness. In my previous video, the RPG section was a blowout. The two Lunar titles won easily, and I'll stand by those choices all day long. But I do admit when I wrote down my initial list, Vi, or Vey as I called it as a kid, was there. This was a cool mix of sci-fi and fantasy tropes. A giant war machine crashes on the planet of Vi, crushing all human life it comes across. It takes the planet's most powerful wizards to stop it. Once defeated, its power is sealed away to never be touched again. Of course, that was wishful thinking, and once again, the technology that nearly destroyed the planet is back at work. You are Sandor, Prince of Lorath, your castle in ruins, your parents killed, your bride kidnapped, and your people under siege. Vi is a pretty standard JRPG from there. Random battles, equipment upgrades, and leveling up make up the majority of the gameplay. It's not the prettiest 16-bit RPG, but the sprites do look great during battles. The real strength here is the story and characters. It's a gripping tale that you'll want to see to its conclusion. It's not lunar good, but this one is overlooked to the point of absurdity.
My previous choices for best use of scaling and rotation were no-brainers. I mean Soul Star and Batman Returns were standouts easily recognizable as some of the better games on the Sega CD. But Core Design had another release that was deserving of some attention as well, and that was Battle Core. Similar to its AH-3 Thunderstrike game, this was a go-anywhere shooter, but here you are piloting a giant mech. The story is simple. A rogue AI and its army is trying to conquer the planet, and it's up to you to stop it. Shoot down enemies to a great soundtrack while you try and stay alive. This is one of the few Sega CD titles that really showed you that the technology was there to give us some truly unique games. Not everything needed to be Genesis ports, and we could have ushered in an era of pseudo 3D gaming that really could have made the system stand out more. Seeing this makes you wonder what else the Sega CD may have been capable of had it lived a few more years. The racing genre was somewhat of a letdown on the Sega CD. What should have had incredible versions of Sega's Hang On, Outrun, and many others, we mostly received ho-hum ports of games from other platforms. I chose Road Rash as my winner, but it did have some stiff competition. Beyond the Limit was an F1 racer with real drivers and teams, while featuring 17 tracks to race on. You can play and save an entire season thanks to the Sega CD's internal save RAM. It's a bit choppy, but the feature-rich options really make it a draw for fans of the sport. Mega Race was pretty much the exact opposite of this in pretty much every way. This was a full-motion video-based racer where sprites are used against pre-rendered backdrops. This is combat racing, and you must destroy your opponents before the contest ends. There is a really irritating host that likes to trash talk your failures, and it's actually not a bad game once you get used to it. It certainly was unique given the few options available for the platform. Finally, BC Racers was also worth mentioning. This used the Chuck Rock universe as a combat racer, very similar to the earlier Mario Kart titles. It has two-player co-op support, eight tracks, multiple camera views, and relies on heavy scaling and rotation for its 3D effects. It's not particularly smooth, but when you do get used to it, it can be a good time. Again, the racing genre wasn't especially strong on the Sega CD, but these few offerings weren't terrible at all. The strategy genre was easily dominated by Shining Force CD and Dark Wizard in my original video, but I'd also like to mention Third World War. This is quite the deep game and it's loaded with different scenarios you can play that allow you to fight an all-out war, assert your dominance economically, and even take a small nation and lead it to world supremacy. 16 countries can be chosen from these various scenarios, from superpowers such as the US and Russia to much smaller nations like Israel and Japan. This isn't just a simple matter of using your military might, as you must also manage your economy and your relationships with the other world powers. You have to worry about revolutions, terrorists, and all sorts of real-world scenarios upsetting the balance of power. If you like the kinds of games that take a long time to complete with many different outcomes possible, this will certainly be of interest. There's a number of very solid action platformers on the Sega CD. My pick for the best was Sonic CD, but I also considered the mixed genre title, Devastator. In this one, you pilot a giant mech in both side-scrolling action and shoot-em-up style gameplay segments. 
It's based on a Japanese anime that I've never seen, so I have no idea what the heck the story is, and since this was only released in Japan and Korea for the Mega CD, it remains a mystery to me to this very day. Don't sweat it though. The gameplay is easy to get into and the objectives are bog standard get to the boss type stuff. It doesn't do much special but the mix of platforming exploration and shoot 'em up levels does make for a good time. It's challenging too and its 7 stages will take most of you quite some time to defeat. It wasn't quite good enough to get a mention with the best of the best, but still fun enough to warrant some attention here. The adventure genre has loads of different game types in it. You get action adventures that can play like platformers with RPG elements. You can get story heavy graphic adventures that are mostly point and click. You get cinematic platformers that are slow and puzzle heavy. I mean there's a lot of game types that can fall into this one simple word. By mixing them all together it's easy to overlook some great titles and that's exactly what happened in my original video. I chose Rise of the Dragon and Snatcher to represent my adventure picks, but by doing so, it left out some games that really deserved a mention. Among these were releases like Dune, which itself was a mix of different genres. It has both point and click adventure sections and strategy portions. Pegging exactly what to call it isn't the point however, it's a really decent game if you enjoy the source material. You need to recruit Fremen, mine Spice, and defend yourself against the dreaded Harkonnen threat. It has video from the original 80s movie and it was able to recreate the world of Dune quite faithfully. It's often overlooked but more than holds its own against similar games of the era. Another one that got lost in the shuffle was Popful Mail. This was an action adventure that plays like a side-scrolling platformer. You can kill enemies for gold, buy items like weapons and armor, and you have multiple characters to choose from as the story unfolds. You can also buy healing and special items to get you through the tougher areas of the game, or where certain obstacles seem impassable at first. It's got great art and the soundtrack is pretty good. The amount of variety in the areas you can play is also impressive. There's nothing quite like it on the Sega CD really, so if you're out for something different, this will definitely fit the bill. That's gonna just about do it for the best of series for the Sega CD. While I tried to be thorough, there are always games that get missed in episodes like these. Some of you probably love the full motion video action of games like Tomcat Alley and wanted to see it get a mention, or maybe you love the adventure scene in The Secret of Monkey Island. I don't discount the quality of these games but rather must simply draw the line somewhere. Otherwise, I'd be covering nearly the entire 200 game library for the device. The point I wanted to make while doing these two videos was that the Sega CD's reputation of this horrifically failed add-on that burned millions of consumers worldwide is not the narrative I subscribe to. Yes, it did fail. Yes, it should have been more. Yes, Sega should have supported it better. But I have shown you well over 50 titles with these two videos that combat this negativity and should give you something to look forward to if you've never played them. I mean in terms of add-ons that's pretty damn good. In fact, it makes one wonder, why aren't similar add-ons seen in such a negative light? Is such venom spewed when people talk about the Famicom disk drive? Think about that for a moment. Similar length of time on the market, similar library size. Yet when attached to Sega's overall failure, the Sega CD is seen as a monumental disaster that directly contributed to the demise of the company as a hardware maker. However you choose to view Sega CD add-on, I just want you to leave here with at least a better feeling that not all of us had the negative experience history loves to attach to this device. Some of us absolutely loved it, and its games are an important part of Sega's history. 
I'm Sigalord X. Thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.